Hello everyone and thank you very much for taking the time to attend this webinar today and uh, apologies now for the issues we had last week with the webinar uh, but we are recording it again so rest assured you will be able to see and interact with the information we have for you today. So this is the Introduction to Social Selling webinar which we like to take people through. Uh, the webinar itself shouldn't take more than an hour. Uh, we may overrun slightly, but uh, in terms of the information and resources that you may need, then all you would really need is a pen and paper and perhaps if you'd like to um, get your LinkedIn account up alongside so you can start playing around some of the uh, features which we'll be showing you throughout the presentation. So, moving on to the first slide. Uh, the aims of today's session, obviously you're all here to understand why social media is important, um, but I think more so than that it is to understand how you can leverage social media to actually get more business. Uh, social media is an incredibly powerful tool, but a very, very few amount of people actually understand how to actually harness this power and, uh, and harness it towards your business outcomes. So we'll go through some of the basis of LinkedIn, we'll understand the content landscape of LinkedIn, and finally we'll go through some uh, stuff on Sales Navigator, which if you do not know is a fantastic tool for your business and sales pipeline development. So who are we? So my name is James Anderson, James Sayward Anderson, and I'm one of the co-founders of So Selling Company, uh, and I started the business alongside the other co-founder sitting right beside me today, Maxwell Hanna, uh, and he's joined now. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks a lot for taking the time to uh, join us on this presentation. So yeah, like James said, I'm the other co-founder of SSC. Most of my background is in B2B enterprise sales, and a lot of my success came down to really understanding how to use social uh, within my business development activities and a uh, bit of interesting background on myself so me and james actually became friends on the uh, run to rome challenge whereby me and james ran from canterbury to rome in under uh, 59 days for charity here's a uh, picture of james here so um yeah we've gone on some grueling uh, quests together and our friends and family are bored of hearing our tales so we use every <laughs> opportunity to uh to plug the challenge yeah brilliant <laughs> so uh, moving on so yeah we were started last year in 2016 uh, there's now eight of us and uh, we're based in Edmund castle we're a young company and uh, we have quite a roster of customers in fact some of our customers uh, wanted to view the webinar today so uh, if you are one of my customers and are viewing the webinar then firstly uh, thank you for being patient with us and secondly when we do webinars for you uh, this certainly won't happen so uh, Hope you enjoy it, and like I said, we have some really great customers in our portfolio. Our biggest one is Fidesa, and we have uh, customers uh, all the way down to one-man bands as well. So here are some free statements before we kind of go on any further. Uh, I'm sure you can kind of attest to what one you are, so we'll go through each statement. This is statement number one. I have real, real understanding of how to deploy social media in a P2P context. Let her understand what social selling is. Second one is I'm confident with my social media activities, but I'm sure about social selling and how it can add value to me. And the third one is I just want to have Friday morning, or in our case, I just want to have an hour out of work so I can enjoy the sun uh, or enjoy or pretend to enjoy our webinar so you can browse Facebook. So hopefully you are one of the first two and not one of the, uh, the last option. And we find that most people in terms of the B2B space, especially from a marketing angle, tend to be number two. So if this is you, then great. This, uh, this, this kind of webinar will help you gain a better understanding of what social selling is in the wider bracket of social media. So moving on to the first topic, and it's probably the biggest question which everyone wants to hear about when we are doing this workshop, is to define what social selling is. Because lots of people have ideas about social selling, but very few people can give a really can clear concise description of what social selling actually is. So our definition of social selling is the process of connecting and engaging with your buyer using social media. So we obviously swear by it because our business was started 
using social selling. It wasn't, we didn't use, you know, we haven't come from a traditional uh, funding background. We've actually built this business from the ground up using social media. So we've really field tested every single thing we've done. And I think that really kind of makes us quite unique in the market. Um, IBM, obviously, they actually use social selling as part of their sales process. And they're one of the biggest conglomerates in the world. So if they're doing it, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it too. And obviously, the most obvious canary in the mind is that Microsoft spent £18 billion last year on acquiring LinkedIn to harness and really take control of the platform, which is going to be the, the major uh, player in terms of social selling for at least the next two to three years. Yeah, so I'm going to um, show you this chart here. So this is our social selling maturity model. And this is designed to help you understand where you are in terms uh, of your maturity when it comes to social selling as an organization. So I'll take you through these steps. So stage one uh, is random acts of social. So this is where, you know, everyone knows social is important, but people are really just doing their own thing. So, you know, people are marketing are doing their own activities. Sales are doing their other thing. There's, it's not really joint up. Uh, there's no real clear strategy. Nothing's being measured and it's all very messy. And 60 percent of organizations are actually at this stage. As you go up uh, to stage two and you start to take social more uh, seriously, you start to actually implement a formal policy. So at stage two, what you really want to focus on is the why. You know, why are we engaging social? Is it to uh, try business development? Is it to increase brand awareness? And then you want to start formulating what your objectives and outcomes are as well. Uh, so that's the policy stage, which um, only about 25 percent of organizations have reached. As you then take the next ladder up, once you've devised your policy, you know, the, the whys and the uh, strategy, you need to then actually go into training and train your organization to deliver on this um, strategy that you've developed at stage two. Stage four is then integration. So it's when you start to integrate different teams, processes and systems together. So that's like in integrating things like LinkedIn with your, C with your CRM, with email marketing, telemarketing. And stage five is optimization. So it's actually able you know, to draw reports from your whole activity, benchmark it against your competitors and different um, areas within your business uh, and then improve the whole, the whole process. So hopefully you can all identify where you are on that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Max obviously hitting that in the head there. So it's just to go over the kind of where social media fits in. And we're not, first of all, saying that social media is a magic bullet. It is uh, merely a channel which will complement every single other activity you're doing in your sales process. So a good example is today I was just speaking to one of our customers and they've actually hired a telesales team because we would recommend having a form of telesales in this process. Like uh, you have to pick up the phone eventually. This isn't replacing the phone. So what uh, the customer said was that they are deploying telesales and using all the data we've gathered for them. So all the conversations that they had online, uh, people who have downloaded white papers, people that have liked certain statuses or commented, and Telesales team are actually going through that data now, and they're having a much, much, much higher conversion rate because people are warm to your brand, they're warm to what you're saying, they even know the name of the person who is selling the product to them. So it's really personal, and that's one of the biggest kind of strains or themes that I can really kind of articulate in this in this training session is that social media is about being personal. It's about putting the human in the sales process and removing the air of mystery and mystique, which traditionally surrounded the uh, sales process. This is just uh, an idea of, of the six stages of the sales journey and where social media kind of fits in fits into that. Um, email does play a big part in this, and we were probably touching that towards the end of the session. But social media, in conclusion, is a great way to really ramp up your activities in terms of feeding your telesales guys or yourself warm data to call. So the mechanics of how we're going to do this is, if you don't know, LinkedIn.com is essentially the iPhone or Salesforce, if I could use another analogy. And there are many, many different apps which are associated to the main body of LinkedIn. So LinkedIn.com is the main kind of homepage which everyone knows about when you log on. Uh, that's really going to be more marketing focused because what we're trying to do here is increase your brand awareness 
increase your impression rates and ultimately increase engagement, where Sales Navigator is more of a sales tool for sales professionals who can actually develop a clear and uh, organized pipeline uh, of engagement, which they can then take off LinkedIn and put into a phone call or a meeting. So obviously this is a webinar and traditionally we would have questions from people, but as this is a recording, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email details will be at the end of the presentation. Or email Max, um, we are happy to answer any questions you have. Or alternatively, just give me a message on LinkedIn. Uh, find my name, send me a message, say I have a question about this and I'm always happy to help. So moving on to LinkedIn.com. So LinkedIn.com has over half a, well, half a billion users, has 17 million UK users, 82% of LinkedIn users use it daily. So it's an incredibly powerful social media tool. And lots of, uh, of our customers, or potential customers, start off with uh, the pretext that LinkedIn doesn't have our target audience on it, doesn't have a customer base on it. But this is really a lie, and I haven't actually found a customer who has not had at least a few thousand of their target audience on LinkedIn are floating about. So it's very, very likely that your customer is on LinkedIn or your buyers are on LinkedIn. So if you're not using it effectively, then you really are missing out on a golden opportunity to prospect. So this section, what we're going to cover in this section, primarily we're going to go over each single content channel on LinkedIn. What I mean by content channel is the different methods which you can use and deploy to engage with your buyer. We we'll then go on to a content marketing tactical plan. This kind of wraps into the first point. We'll give you a great overview of every single way you can interact with your buyer. Uh, we'll touch on brand and employee engagement on LinkedIn as well as a final topic, and we'll cover off some hacks which you can use to kind of increase your engagement with content. So this is a really, really cool graph, um, and this, this kind of uh, document is a great visual representation of the different methods you can deploy to engage your buyers online. So what we're going to do in this section is we're going to go through each one of these. I'm going to show you each one of these and how you do it. And then what you can do at a later date is either do this yourself and go through it with me now if you want, or you can simply listen back to the recording or play it out in public to your team. And you can all go through it, pause video, and, and kind of get lessons from there. So. We'll start off with a, a description of each different channel in terms of the communication channel. Uh, then we then go on to a demo, and then after the demo, we'll move on to the next one, and then we'll evaluate the most effective ones uh, after this section. So we'll start off with number one, which is LinkedIn company and showcase pages. So I will pass over to Max to uh, take us through this demonstration of LinkedIn showcase pages, and he'll also take you through uh, Point Drive, aka SlideShare, as well. Okay, thanks, James. So I'm just going to log into um, my account here. Okay, so just bear with me while I um, log out. Cool, excellent. We're into LinkedIn. All right, so um, yes, yeah, so now I'm going to take you, um, just going to show you the difference between a company page and a showcase page. So like I said, it's um, uh, pretty straightforward. So your company page is designed um, to show basically your company as a whole. Um, so it's, it's for people to follow your company. So if I go find, for example, um, type in IBM, um, you can see here IBM, so this is their company page. So all the information here, all the followings here are going to be um, around IBM as a whole. 
But what you may want to do is create a showcase page. And a showcase page is designed to showcase your different products, your different services. And you can create a following around this that's going to be a bit more bespoke to, to that industry. So I'll show you a quick example of an IBM showcase page. So you can see here, IBM Cloud, IBM showcase page. So this is a showcase page just to show off their cloud services. And obviously, it's got a different following, different messages. Um, so yeah, so that's the difference there. Pretty straightforward. And I'm going to show you um, the next thing on the list, which is um, uh, LinkedIn Point Drive. So LinkedIn Point Drive, in our opinion, uh, has replaced LinkedIn SlideShare. So um, what you were able to do, and what you can continue to do, is pop your slide deck um, on LinkedIn SlideShare and share it that way. But one of the issues is that it's quite hard to actually drive engagement with that slide deck. It's good if you want to have something that people can search via Google, and then it might be the slide deck may be able to appear up in your Google search, so there's some benefit there. But in all honesty, point drive really is where you want to be putting your materials, and I'll show you why. So here's my sales navigator account here. So if you go to point drive, um, and point drive is included with all um, sales navigator team licenses. And what it essentially is, is a landing page within LinkedIn for you to put your marketing to. So I'll just wait for this to load up and I'll show you what ours looks like. So, um, so I've got a couple here, some that I'm working on, but the main one we use is um, this one here. So it's the social selling company. I'll sh show you what it looks like. So when people visit it, this is what the, um, <coughs> uh, the page actually looks like. You share a link, so you share a link like this. So this is what the link is, very short link um, that you can share. So when you're talking to people on LinkedIn, starting conversations, you can even share it via email. It doesn't have to be LinkedIn. You get taken to this page. And you can have a quick summary of what you do. And I have a video here um, that goes through a few uh, case studies of what we've done and also um, um, a few videos there. So it's um, a really great place to, to host your content. And then what you're able to do after that is get stats. So when people actually view the page, you're able to report on who's viewed it. So it's not like you're just sharing content and you have no idea what's happened with it. You can actually get real insights into engagement with this. So I'm just loading up the um, uh, insights tool here. Yeah, and like Max said, it, it is very powerful because when you do have um, engagement, it's really important to track who's engaging with your content because this is uh, a buying signal. If someone is liking your content, if they're obviously outside the organization, they are not your mates, or your old work colleagues, then these people have clearly displayed a buying signal. And what the task of a modern social salesman is, is to turn this attention or this kind of uh, engagement into some kind of more formalized sales conversation. Yeah, you can see here some of the names here who have all viewed it, all engaged with, with my content. And this is really the starting point of your kind of like business development activity, driving engagement from content, giving value. That's how you're going to open conversations. Yeah, perfect. So, so that was <clears throat> the first two kind of uh, uh, ways you can engage. And out of the two, I would say that the most important one is point drive, um, aka slide share. I think that as a as a key takeaway, I think after this session, if everyone could literally just go on Sales Navigator, to upgrade it at the first point, and then actually download the point drive and start using it, I think it's really crucial that you do do that because if you start doing that and you tie that in with your marketing content, then you're going to get some real wins. So move on now to publishing on LinkedIn. So just to put a caveat before we kind of get into too much detail on this, we'll be doing a whole section on publishing very, very soon. I just want to take you through the mechanics of publishing on LinkedIn. They will then go into the theory of how you post good content on LinkedIn after we've gone through this section here. So as you can see, we're going to go back to our homepage now. So what we're doing 
in terms of uh, publishing content on LinkedIn, uh, that the primary reason we're pu publishing stuff on the newsfeed is to do two things. The first one is to get impressions on your personal profile. So just like if you're walking down the street and 20 years ago and you see a bill, billboard, a poster, and you cast an eye on it, and the aim is to try and get your brand or your company out there as much as possible without becoming spammy. You do that by giving value to your to your buyers. So rather than posting sales pitches, which people hate now, um, you post stuff which is of valuable content. So this is the news feed here, and simply to post something, go to the bottom of the article or click on this article here, and you write a post. So you'd write, you know, insert post here, and you go from there, and you put a nice photo and, uh, and go from there. So here's one I made earlier. I'll go onto my profile now. Um, because I always like to use myself as an example because I think it's uh, it's all well and good saying all these all these things, but if the person who actually says it doesn't do it themselves, and you have to be kind of suspect their advice. So this is my activity. So I try and post about once or twice a week. Sometimes I post a bit less, but I try and focus on quality in quantity. So my last sort of two posts are posts which at a primary cause just are trying to get value, trying to kind of give people some really good engagement and insight. So this post here was about 230 characters, had a nice, clear, quite captivating image. And really it was just telling businesses that social media is quite complicated. And in order to really get the maximum value out of social media, you have to really appreciate each channel as its own native language. And as a result of that, got quite a few likes. It got thousands of views on the pro on the on the post itself, and I massively increased my brand engagement, my personal brand and corporate brand engagement. So, on the news feed, if you want to post, uh, another takeaway is if you feel like posting something, great, get your opinion out there, make it opinionated, write some text here, get a nice clear photo, and try to do that once a week. So focus on an opinion. A value, a value add, an insight, something you've seen recently, which really, really will get your target market to go. And again, we'll go into this in much more detail in the next section. I just want to teach you the mechanics of how you do that. This is just a new speed post. If you want to write an article, then you change this by simply going on, clicking away from the news feed and then clicking on this. What happens now is you get sent to another one of LinkedIn's apps, and that app is called LinkedIn Pulse. And what Pulse does is it's essentially the editing uh, tool for, for LinkedIn. So if you feel like having some kind of opinion or it's editorial, or it's controversial, then post something on this medium here, and you should get some traction. And the aim of this medium is an editorial, it's meant to be personal, it's meant to be opinionated, it doesn't matter if it's slightly controversial, the aim is to get, again, your face, your brand out there as a thought leader. So to recap, the two main ways you can publish on LinkedIn or post on a news feed is by one, going onto your home dashboard, clicking on here, writing a post, and then two, clicking away from the dashboard, clicking write an article and go from there. And finally, um, we have two more LinkedIn sponsored updates and direct sponsored content and then to lesser less degree LinkedIn groups. So content which is sponsored, uh, what you can do is, is sponsor your content. So if we see here, we have advertising banners here. But we also have, if I scroll down f far enough, I will soon see a post like this. And what this is, is a sponsored ad. And a sponsored ad has been published by this company and LinkedIn are pushing this to me based on this company's search criteria. So whoever is here has put in a search criteria and said, I want to be put in front of directors uh, who run digital companies who are based in London or the UK. And that is pushed to my news feed. LinkedIn gives preferential um, treatment to those people. So if you have some budget to spare and you think this could be something good, and by budget, I would say you'd need about 500 to 1,000 pounds a month as a minimum to make this work. You can publish a newsfeed post or direct to newsfeed post by clicking on work and then clicking on the advertise function here. The advertise function will take you to LinkedIn Marketing Solutions. 
When you're on this page, you simply click create an ad and you'll be taken through the wizard as to how to set up a LinkedIn ad. Now, I have done pretty much all of my advertisements or our advertisement as a company on my profile. So on Max's, com on Max's profile, you won't see that much activity, but we have three campaigns here, which are on hold. Um, and essentially what you should have is feedback on your, on your engagement. Obviously we haven't done anything for a while on Max's account, so it's kind of a bit redundant. But if we click on, have we got anything going on here? So yeah, we haven't actually got any advertising on Max's account. Um, however, I will just show you the mechanics of how to do it. You create a campaign like so, and then you go through the necessary channels to basically engage the target audience. But this is essentially a rough overview. If you want to find out how to do ads properly in more detail, then that's almost another training session in itself. So don't want to spend too much time on this. And finally, LinkedIn groups. Again, of all these activities, I'd say this is the most the least effective. I think LinkedIn groups now have become very saturated. Um, I probably would, uh, would advise against setting up a group. It's a lot of work for not a great reward, and there's actually much better features now which LinkedIn use, um, which will get you a much bigger ROI. So re to recap all these activities, in order of most important, I would say, Primarily, you need to get yourself a point drive account set up ASAP, get your content up there, start prospecting. That is number one. Number two, obviously, publishing on LinkedIn. You need to be a presence, you need to be out there publishing, uh, displaying value to your buyers. And number three, sponsored ads. Again, they're good. They get in front of the target audience, however, they are quite expensive. And then finally, uh, at the bottom of the heap really would be LinkedIn groups um, and SlideShare and company pages, which don't really get as much engagement as we would expect. So if you have any questions on that, then please write them down, send me an email after this uh, workshop is complete. So here's just the exercise. Here again are the forms of engagement. So I'm just going to go back to the presentation now. Here's the other forms of engagement. Again, there are six forms primarily. I will send the slide deck alongside this presentation to everyone afterwards. But it's good to take a mental note of each different form of engagement. So when you're making your marketing plan, you can have a better idea of how you're going to engage your buyer and also have an appreciation of what method of engagement will get the best results for your brand. So here's just an example, moving on now to more the mechanics of LinkedIn publishing. Just to add a caveat that there's no exact science to this. Um, content creation, content curation, content production is not a science. It does depend on what type of audience you're focusing on. However, from us doing this for over a year now, we do have a rough idea of what works and what doesn't work on social. So the worst thing we hate is corporate dry talking. What we mean by this is, is is post and content which is which is created in a way which sounds like it was created in the 1990s in a dark and dingy ballroom in Wall Street. Um, we've moved beyond that now. Uh, to be successful online is to be human, is to be social. So if you are creating copy which is going to go on LinkedIn, always consider that the medium you're operating in is called social media for a reason. And I underline the word social because people do not like talking to companies, they like talking to individuals. So if you have a content plan, please, please, please try and put that content through a person, a human being who's going to actually talk uh, sense to their buyers and not kind of come as this big global conglomerate block, which really alienates your kind of customers. So here is just uh, you know, an idea and stuff I just touched on. So. Again, being honest and sincere, so social media is a great tool, but can also be a terrible tool if you are a business which exploits people. It's very, very easy for someone to complain and shout about what you've done wrong. So with that in mind, it's really important to, to make sure you are giving value and that you're coming across as human and personal. Second one here is about sales pitches. So what I said at the beginning is if you post on LinkedIn or if you post a direct message to people and you're selling your solution at the first point of entry, I promise you, you are not getting results. You may get one or two people who say, yes, you've just hit me exactly the right time. But if I'm being honest with you, people are far too cold 
and they do not know you enough for you to start pitching your half million pound solution to them in any uh, way soon. So do not sell to people as a first point of call. Use the analogy of the jab, 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 right hook. So jab people with value, jab people with value, jab people with value, and then right hook them with a, with a sales pitch when they are used to who you are and they've shown enough buying signals to warrant a sales pitch. And then moving on to the more exciting idea of content that excites us. So content which is really good is fundamentally story-based. So especially for Twitter and less so for LinkedIn, if you are doing content, make sure there's a story behind it. You know, Don't be afraid to interweave some kind of narrative about your company and your individual feelings as you evolve as a human being uh, with your wider company goals. So what I mean by story-based content is post updates, photos, achievements, inspiration, focus on emotion, give value, and inspire people rather than create content which is dry and boring. And don't be afraid to try and bring out your talent in an organization to try and put that out there because not all content has to be sales pitches and we'll go into the con content compass later on you should be aiming to, to publish content which hits four key goals and metrics so don't be afraid to post stuff which is a bit more facebooky i hate that word facebooky but a bit more commercial or a bit more light-hearted as long as it's interweaved with more uh, strategic and more targeted messages focused on a more niche audience so another one is the right context so this again touched on my last point LinkedIn, the language of LinkedIn, if I could kind of compare it as an analogy, would be a networking event. So a networking event, you're not going to go into a networking event, introduce yourself to someone and say, hi, this is my solution. It costs £2,000. Do you want to buy it? It would sound sort of borderline autistic if you did that. So what uh, we recommend doing is when you're on LinkedIn, imagine LinkedIn is a massive networking hall. There's rather than 100 people of your buyers, there's about 10,000 people there. And your job is to slot nicely into that group and give value and attract a crowd around you, a nice little crowd of people who are listening to you. So when you go for your sales pitch, it will come across as natural and it will come uh, as smoothly and it will appear natural rather than kind of come in straight away with a sales pitch. Finally, it's personal. So... We, we're under no illusions that the business gets done face to face. So one of the great ways you can interweave social media with, 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 with workshops. So we're a big fan of interweaving social media um, and LinkedIn events, uh, LinkedIn social selling strategies with workshop and connecting the two together to make a unified uh, kind of digital and face to face networking event. And here just an example of stuff which works. So videos, interviews, workshops, webinars, Try and always increase the level of human interaction you are you are engaging with your customers. So don't reduce it. If you reach out to someone on LinkedIn and then you 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 speak to them uh, on email and you don't even call them, you're reducing level of interaction. If you if you speak to them on LinkedIn, push them to email, or even better, push them for a call. Once you've called them, push them to meet, or send a video of you talking, or or do a webinar. Try and get get that interaction across because you just making it much easier to sell to someone when they're ready to. Here's just a hack on how to do it. So the first thing you need to do is assign a thought leader. So a thought leader is in, within your organization, someone who is uh, a leader or a pioneer or the best at a certain topic within your company. Get that person, nominate that person. Um, at the same time as that, research the target audience. So try and understand what your buyers are doing online. What I mean by this is try to see, A, where your buyer is online. If they are, if they are even online, um, there's a small chance they may not be, but research that. And then once you've done that, produce a valuable piece of content. So by a valuable piece of content, I don't mean spend two minutes and knock together a brochure and rehash that as a white paper. No, what I mean is actually put some time to giving your customers some value i.e. now um, you know we've spent several hours producing this um, workshop we've rehearsed it we've created landing pages for it we've sent it out we've managed people's relationships we're even doing it again to make sure everyone gets the workshop because we understand the value of giving value 
So when you produce content, remember that. Don't produce content uh, in half-assed uh, manner because it will come back with half-assed results. Get the landing page up, so host the content on the landing page. So what we mean by landing page is a page where you can capture people's information. It's very, very important to capture data and catch people's information so you can start to prospect them at a later date. Focus on value, push them through the sales pipeline, rinse and repeat this process twice a month and you'll be on to a winner. So quickly, some content hacks. So when you're writing content, try and put your keywords, embed the keywords into your content because LinkedIn seems to favor that more. And a really, really quick win is to actually, when you are posting content under a certain channel, so just say it's a marketing-based piece of content, find the editor of that channel. So LinkedIn has an editor for each channel. Go on Twitter, say, hi, I'm doing this. Please retweet or, or can you um, share this as a featured article on LinkedIn? And you may get lucky. If you do this 10 times, you may get three or four people saying yes. When you do do that, you get traction and then you get influencer status. So as a result of my kind of activities, um, I've actually now uh, posted a Huffington Post, and I'll show you later on a, a slide. So I post a Huff Post now from doing that. So it does work. It's all about being smart, about being savvy, finding that decision maker in a group or on your um, uh, chosen editorial channel and trying to kind of have that human conversation. So just before we go into that, it's just a bit touching on employer advocacy on social media. So what you mean by this is if you have over five staff or even even three staff, you should be sitting down and working out how you can exploit your own social resources to try and increase your business outcomes. So obviously, at social selling company, we're all incredibly active on LinkedIn. Um, it's almost mandatory for all of our staff members to be LinkedIn wizards. Um, but we're not expecting everyone to do that. We're expecting, at the very least, in your organization, everyone should have a LinkedIn account. Everyone should have Sales Navigator, understand how to use Sales Navigator, and be on track or in line with a wider company strategy about how you're going to use social media to increase your business outcomes. So fundamentally, you have to educate people first about the value of social media. Once you educate them about the value of social media, you need to train them how to use social media. Once you train them on social media, you need to install a policy or strategy as to how you're going to harness this activity into tangible business outcomes. So here's just an idea of the content timetable compass, which we were looking at earlier on. So the content compass, and when you're looking at employee advocacy, and really when you're looking at any form of content campaign, is basically your guide as to how you're going to navigate this kind of murky world of um, content marketing on LinkedIn, social media marketing, and employee advocacy on social media. So when you have your staff members, everyone has unique stories. There's many inspirational stories in all companies. And what you want to do is incentivize people to share their stories on social media um, through their professional profiles. So if someone's running a marathon, you know, don't be afraid to say, look, if you're running a marathon, push it on LinkedIn. No, we, we want to promote our company or our staff as people who are ambitious. Not only that, the positive um, act of running a marathon alongside your brand can only help your company profile. But in tandem to that, you should all, also encourage the staff to post more technical content. So if you have someone in, in the office who's a real tech whiz but has had trouble kind of getting his opinion out there, then you can sit that person down and say, look, if you publish, if you can consistently write some good content, 300 to 500 words, um, push that through your personal profile, you're going to get really, really good personal brand exposure. And that's going to help your career, that will help your salary, and that will help the wider business goals as well. So there are four, essentially, main ways you can kind of engage the target audience. And we covered two. So the more viral content down here, which is primarily for awareness, so the marathon post, which should be down here. And then the other side have very engaging technical pieces of content. So at the top right, the very extreme, you're looking at workshops dedicated for a very niche subject with a very small target audience. So that could be a social selling workshop or even more nuanced than that. It could be a LinkedIn sponsored ad campaign workshop, which has a very, very niche audience. Um, and you want to publish content around all four of these quadrants. And then what happens is if you publish content around these four quadrants, then you're basically covering all your your uh, you, you, 
you've kept your house in order in terms of your content production. You have awareness content, you have staff posting cool things, but you also have the drier, more technical pieces, which are going to lead to much more business outcome results. So yeah, do cool stuff. I mean, I'm, I said earlier on Huffington Post, from doing that, from constantly retweeting and, 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 and hooking up people online and getting excited about what we do, um, here's Bar Anthony again. Not expecting people to run marathons or do thousands of press ups, but you can see here if you play your cards right, you can get a post which does go viral. You're not going to get any more business from it, but what you will do is it massively increase your website traffic. It will it will increase your impressions by thousands of percent, and you will just get a massive boost in your SEO and personal brand from doing that. So just kind of touch this in terms of encouraging compelling narratives. So make sure you encourage people to talk about what they're doing and don't be afraid to make your company a place which is actually somewhere where being social and social media is not a bad thing not to be punished on social media it's to be encouraged on social media for linkedin you should encourage people to take photos of their work encourage them to talk about good things about what they're doing with their job because ultimately what you're doing and what they're doing is being brand advocates for your company and from doing that you get more customers so reward engagement as well so give people incentives to share really cool stuff um, from the company. So here's just a quick slide uh, about how you should educate employees and how to create relevant engaging content. So you know, give them guidelines, uh, give them brand resources, give them communication training, and then what you can do from there is make them brand ambassadors. And touching back to the five pillars, which Matt spoke about earlier on, is trying to move you from a random policies of random acts of social to actually having some formal policy in place which really, really kind of condenses all social media activity into one powerful laser, which is going to kind of shoot through and rise above all your competitors. So enough of me talking now. Um, again, it is a very, very broad overview of, of LinkedIn.com. There are, I'm not expecting you to completely understand anything. That's why we recorded it. You can look back on it. You can look back on recordings. Um, if you want more information about how we can help you in this department, we do run training sessions, which is dedicated just for LinkedIn, just for marketing, just for content production, and just for establishing policy. What we're going to move on to next, and Matt's going to take you through, is the more of the business end of this. So it's using Sales Navigator, which is another app on LinkedIn, which actually turns this awareness and engagement into tangible business opportunities. Yeah, thanks, James. So <clears throat> like James mentioned, he's focused really on the uh, marketing side of LinkedIn. I'm now going to show you how to go about um, carrying up business development through social. So why consider Sales Navigator? So this, this section is focused on Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator is um, the premium version of LinkedIn. Uh, so it costs about £80 a month um, to run, which in my opinion is, um, is a bargain uh, for what you can get out of out of this, um, this platform. So what it essentially is, um, first point is a social CRM. You can save up to 5,000 leads on Sales Navigator from your target market. So, uh, so you know, whether or not you're targeting, wherever, you, wherever your vertical may be, 99.9% .9 of your target audience are on LinkedIn, and Sales Navigator gives you the ability to save prospects and organize them into different groups. You know, but five, 10 years ago, if you wanted to buy a database of 5,000 names of people in your target audience, you'd pay thousands and thousands of pounds for that. This is all free and included within Sales Navigator. It's a great tool to understand buyer behavior because all the, the database that you build, those leads that you save, you can actually do some basic social listening into what's, what these people are talking about, what's happening in their companies, and it gives you some really good context and the opportunity to start conversations um, uh, via the content that they're sharing. It's a good way to track, uh, like I said, company activity, and you also have team management tool that I'll show you a bit so you can actually see how you're performing as a team and it gives you some stats into your activity. Social doesn't need to be guesswork anymore. You can actually get quite scientific with it. You can also use tools such as Point Drive and Sales Navigator to drive engagement with your content. And ultimately, it's a good place to actually generate leads, so real business opportunities. So, you know, that's the changes approach from a marketing angle. I'm now going to approach it more from business development. So. If you are in sales and, uh, you know, five, 10 years ago, if your sales manager said, look, go out and win some new customers, uh, you'll be doing the old sales model. So you'd be uh, kind of like picking up the phone, 
doing cold calling to people who've never heard of you. You'd be qualifying the leads and then doing sales demos um, after that. So, you know, don't get me wrong, telemarketing still does work. And I have I've spoken to organizations where they do still do, um, you know, cold calling, get results. But I think by that same token, I think people are finding it a lot harder and it's not as um, lucrative as it used to be. And what we're about is actually using social to uh, combine with telemarketing. So it's not replacing it. It's just integrating this new uh, strategy to supplement the telemarketing efforts. So the new sales model, we believe, is that rather than the first point of call being a cold call, actually using social to reach out to people to in, engage and educate them about what your company does and then using telemarketing once you've gained some sort of awareness or engagement. That way it's a better use of your time. We find that that's a much more effective way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a, a demo of Sales Navigator. Uh, so this is designed, uh, this demo really, for people who haven't used Sales Navigator before. I do do another webinar on advanced Sales Navigator tactics. But for the purpose of this one, it's going to be just taking you really through the basics. So I'm going to teach you how to build a database um, on Sales Navigator. I'm going to teach you how to drive engagement through um, content. I'm going to teach you how to generate and nurture leads, and then ultimately how to measure all this activity. So I'm just going to press escape here. I'm going to go back into my Sales Navigator account. Uh, so here we are. So this is Sales Navigator. Um, so this is what the interface looks like. So first thing, database builds. So this is where you can build your database. So what you do is you go on um, Lead Builder here. So Lead Builder gives you various search um, functionality. So let's say um, for geography, let's say you're targeting people in London, uh, London, United Kingdom, uh, let's say at director level in information and technology services. You know, whatever your fun whatever your uh, criteria may be, this is just an, just an example. If you do second, third, um, you can see it comes up with 9,190 results. So you now there's literally well 2,923. So there's actually thousands of prospects uh, that you can go after. If I include that to first as well, so if you wanted to search for your existing database, um, you can even be first. I've got an extra kind of th over 3,000 in my first three connections. You can go find by postal code, years of experience down here, um, uh, years at current company. So what you can actually do is also target people who are new to a company. So if you can find someone who's been in a company you know, less than a year, when people are in a company less than a year, they're usually looking to make changes. So if you can find directors who are less than a year in their organization, so that now is it down to that top to 1,523, I bet you know they're going to be open to hearing about you. So there's some really cool filters you can do to narrow down your list. So if you run that search, it will bring up all the uh, database that meets your criteria. And then what you have the ability to do is then save them as a lead. So what you do is you just hit save as lead and now they're included in your uh, database. So if I go to leads here, I've been building this up over the last um, week or so. So I've got 412 names here that I'm prospecting. And um, this is this is my database. So there you go. And then once you've built the database in your home section, you can actually do some, uh, like I said, social listing. So all the accounts, I've got quite a few saved here, and all the leads, you can actually see what these people are talking about. So you can see here, one of the accounts saved, Richard uh, Butcher at F5 Networks, talking about F5 being positioned as a leader. So if I wanted to start a conversation with him, I don't even need to be a connection. As long as they're saved leads, you're going to see all the content they're sharing. So I can be like, you know, I can like this, or I can write a comment. And that way, I'm starting to have a conversation with people talking about, you know, what they're posting, what they're interested in. And this is a great tactic to start having a, a, a conversation with your, your target audience. So, so I've shown you how to build a database. I've shown you how to listen to what your um, companies are doing. Another thing that is worth mentioning is that you can search by accounts. So if you actually want to target businesses rather than individuals, you can search by account. So if you look at the side column here, you can actually target um, 
companies, but also by like department headcount here, annual revenue. You can also do head, uh, company head headcount growth. So you can be like, you know, you can target companies who've grown, you know, um, by like whatever percentage. And if you find like a, a company's growing in size, then you can say, you know, this company's doing well, they're growing, they're probably looking to invest in more infrastructure, say, and you can also search for department headcount. So again, it gives some cool filters to narrow down the companies. LinkedIn are also giving the ability to search um, technology within organizations. So you can search for organizations that use Google Analytics, say, out of the companies that I've saved here. So if you've got a solution that integrates with Google Analytics, for example, you can start to build a, a prospect list um, you know, that you know has that technology stack within it. So that's just another cool little uh, search criteria there. So what you've um, done now, and I'll just go back to the points here, make sure I'm on track. So now what um, you need to do is turn that um, list into um, the awareness phase, because at this stage you've saved the leads, but you don't actually know they're aware of you. So what you do in the awareness stage is actually the most cost effective thing is to send out connection requests. So what we do is we send out personalized connection requests so you can go connect and then you can reference here. You've got about 200 characters to write something personal. So you can delete this and write a personal connection request. We we'll usually expect about 20 to 40 percent of people accept your, your requests. And this can be higher if you spend time optimizing your profile and establishing yourself as a thought leader with some of the tactics James has discussed. You get a much higher uh, connection rate. So, out of the people here that I've been connecting with, um, I've managed to so far get 62 people accept out of this um, out of this pool. So, I'm still working through it, but I'm starting to get you know some good people here. So, I've got global managing director at AS and K Group, um, CEO DG Study World. You know, these are some group sales director Capita. So, these are some pretty big companies or accept to my connection request. And then what you want to do now is probably move into direct messaging. So this is again, going back to James's point about what is the content that you're sharing. What you want to be able to do is message people, but you want to give value. Like James said about, you know, jab, jab, right hook. You need to be giving away value to start getting engagement. And what we use in our methodology is actually LinkedIn point drive to drive engagement. So I will message people and say, you know, thanks for connecting, um, look forward to on your work. Um, I'm giving away, you know, my secrets to social selling online. And um, I've, I've hosted that on Point Drive. And again, in your industry, think about, you know, your industry, what's, what value you can give away. Host something on Point Drive. What you find works really well on Point Drive is videos, like five, ten minute videos, just giving away, you know, knowledge that's going to add value. That's what's going to drive engagement. So as you can see here, I've shown, showed you this earlier, but it's, um, you know, loads of collateral there. I've got, um, you know, a bunch of views on here now. So that's that's how we, we would recommend it. And when, when you are doing messaging to individuals, it also does give you some insights. So you can see at the bottom, uh, LinkedIn will, will prompt you with some insights here. So you can say, you know, you've got 376 share connections. You can reference on those. You've got two mutual groups located in the same area. You can see, like, you know, Gareth shared a post, um, and you'll know a good telemarketer perhaps there. Um, so you can then start to use that to start your, your conversations. And what you're trying to do, like I said, is get people um, engaging with your content. LinkedIn is about awareness, it's about engagement. If you want to start using LinkedIn to book actual, you know, like leads, and it's, you know you can still use the phone, but you want to get people to a point where they have engaged with your content first. So that's our approach. Um, I'll show you now how to um, um, measure your results. So what we're going to do now is I'll show you uh, the uh, the reporting features here. So if you go to admin, once you're on, on Sales Navigator Team Edition, you can see uh, some reports. So you can see here. Um, as a team, so me and James here as an example, see our, our social selling index, you can see how active we are, how many leads we have saved, accounts saved, searches performed, profile views, in-mail messages sent. So you can see I sent 104 messages, or James only sent 10, and he's, um, that's probably why I'm a better social seller than him. Um, 
as you can see here as well, messages sent. James has actually beat me on the messages sent. He sent 1,974. I've only sent 1,278. Um, so um, obviously he's outdone me there. Um, but yeah, so you, as, as if you're a sales manager, you can actually you know, score your team, see how active they are, push, push out messages and also measure how many, out there, out of how many messages we sent, how many are actually responding to our call to action. So it's a really uh, powerful tool. And like I said, this is just designed to give you the basics of, um, of Sales Navigator. There's a lot more you can do with it, um, but uh, that's uh, going to be separate for another, will be another webinar. So I'm going to jump back into the presentation now and go into how uh, we can actually help you um, improve what you're doing. So these are, this section is designed just to give you some practical uh, takeaways from this webinar that you can implement at your organization. So again, going back to the social selling maturity model, um, if you could think about where you are in this, in this table, are you at stage one, random acts of social? Stage two, are you just you know, formulating your official policy and strategy? Stage three, are you thinking about training? Stage four, are you actually pretty advanced and now you're just looking to integrate everything together? Or are you at stage five where you just need some help, you know, getting the reporting right? So think about where you are. Um, I can offer some advice on how to get to the next steps. So random acts of social policy. Again, like I mentioned, focus on the why. We really organization you need to know why are we doing social. A lot of people I speak to, you know, they're doing social media because everyone else is doing it. It feels good but they actually know why they're doing it. Is it business development? Is it brand awareness? Are you trying to catch up with your competitors? Get that all written down into a formal policy. We would strongly recommend doing a social listening report. So this social listening is about listening to your uh, target audience online, finding out what content's trending, where your audience are, where are the conversations happening, how you rank in terms of your um, competitors. You also need to look at, you know, we focus a lot on LinkedIn, but you can also look into things like Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, YouTube, and, you know, really drill down into where you stand in relation to your competition and what content is trending, and that will feed your strategy. You also need to do an internal audit about how you, what your capabilities are internally and what your knowledge gaps are. Create an effective content plan, then you also need to have a roadmap so you've got a clear understanding of where we're going with this. So once you then move from policy to training, so you've then developed your strategy, you then need really to train your staff uh, to implement that. And what you need at this stage is an expert in B2B social. So me and James, we do a lot of training for organizations. And um, you know, if you're at this stage and you need help with training, that's something you can assist in. Then to go from training to integration, you really need to be using LinkedIn Team Insight to help you understand what's going on with your organization. You need to be linking up your activity on LinkedIn with your CRM. Uh, there's a really good integration out there with things like Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. You need to be pulling LinkedIn with your email marketing campaigns because they can supplement each other really well. Telemarketing, again, I still think telemarketing is important, but you need to be calling you know, someone who's shown some interest in what you do. So telemarketing to, to some people you've engaged with on LinkedIn is really effective. So you need to be integrating sponsored ads. So that could be you know, not just on LinkedIn, but other channels like Facebook. That's some of the examples of the integration you can do. Now, as you go to the final stage, which is optimization, you need to be having up to time reports on you know, what's going on in your organization, how's your content trending, how are we uh, in relation to our competitors, what, how many leads are we generating through social, and, and providing ongoing training because, as you know, this space is fast moving and you need to keep up to date with um, what's going on. So we're just going to take you now through a quick case study um, with Fidesa. Pass you back to James to run through this uh, section. All right, so I won't take too long. I mean, just to touch on what Max said. So this is our, you know, much more of a, 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 our strategy, our, our service for um, businesses who are at the size where they ha already have kind of social media or marketing teams in place. If you are an SME solution, we do offer a managed service, which is basically uh, a service where we actually take control of your presence online and we do the whole social selling process for you. So if that's of interest for you, then we can talk about that um, after the webinar. So just to whiz through this, this webinar and this case study now, um, in fact, I won't spend too much time on it. It was just uh, to give you an understanding of kind of, 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 of how it works. So 
you know, we, we, we work with Fidesa, who are a very big company, and we are helping them essentially become more proficient on social media. And what we did is at the first call to call, we produced a social listening report, which again, like Max said, covers off the basics of how to um, kind of find a buyer and understand what content works online. And we helped them produce a content timetable. And then we also produce a buyer journey. And then we've done some training for them as well. So um, again, I, I'm aware of time. So I'll just whiz through kind of this last kind of section here. If you want to find out more about how we can help your own business, then please get in touch with us. Because um, I think that uh, quite a few attendees here today will probably be, I hope, I hope interested in finding out more about how we can help. So just touch on uh, how we can help. So. We offer, Max said, two things. Um, we offer proof of concept um, and we offer the managed service solution, which can really help you really take the energy and take the hassle out of doing this all in-house. We can do it all for you. Um, we also offer CRM integration, email integration as well. Um, so this is just basically uh, if our service is in a nutshell. And um, of course, we're always around to help in the meantime. The next step, we will be obviously sending this this email. You would have got this this kind of workshop from our emails, um, and you may receive uh, kind of a courtesy call from my, even myself or one of our my colleagues just to go over if we could help you in more detail. If you did want some more help, we do offer a free 20 minute consultation about your current social media strategy. And in terms of our budgetary pricing, our pricing for managed service starts around £1,000 a month and it goes up to about one and a half grand a month if you do email as well. So I won't keep you any longer and I hope you enjoyed this workshop. It has been a whistle stop tour of social selling. It's by no means meant to be exhaustive, but hopefully now it's given you a better understanding of how to apply this process in your own business. And I look forward to seeing how uh, some of you deploy it on social media. I look forward to reaching out to you there. So thank you very much for me. Yeah, thanks, guys. And uh, I will hopefully speak to some of you very, very soon.